Wednesday morning, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down a provision of a federal law denying federal benefits to married gay couples and cleared the way for the same-sex marriages to resume in California. The first decision concerned the Defense of Marriage Act, a federal law passed in 1996. In a 5-4 to four decision, the High Court ruled the portion of the legislation prohibiting same-sex couples from receiving federal health, tax, and pension benefits was unconstitutional. In another close decision, the justices supported a lower court ruling on California's Proposition No. 8. The second ruling will clear the way for California officials to resume same-sex unions. Oklahoma Governor Mary Fallon issued a statement on Wednesday in response to the rulings. Governor Fallon said, quote, When given the opportunity to vote on the issue, 75% of Oklahoma voters supported a constitutional amendment declaring that marriage in this state shall consist only of the union of one man and one woman. Governor Fallon went on to say, I do not and will not support expanding the definition of marriage to include same-sex couples. Here at The Oklahoman, we wanted to know what your thoughts were on the matter and what questions you have about the U.S. Supreme Court's rulings and how they could impact the Sooner State. We submitted your questions to our man in Washington, D.C., Chris Castile. All right, the first question comes from Mike Davis. He writes, quote, if DOMA was ruled unconstitutional on the basis of equal protection, then could the same ruling happen on Oklahoma's constitutional amendment that defines marriage? And did this ruling pave the way for gay marriage in Oklahoma? So what the court did in the Defense of Marriage Act uh, decision was to say that the Equal Protection Clause, as it pertained to federal benefits, um, that, that's where that came into play as, a, as, as what was unconstitutional, is that the federal government had defined marriage and federal law and then allowed benefits for people, married couples, you know, a man and a woman, but denied them for same-sex couples. So that's where the Equal Protection Clause argument came in. The court today actually did not rule on the broad question of whether um, it was un unconstitutional for states to ban gay marriage. The, this question of the equal protection pertained to the federal benefits question, so it didn't have any effect on any of the states um, that had, like Oklahoma, that have uh, constitutional bans uh, on, on marriage. That's a question that the court is probably going to get to later, though. The, they had that California case before them today, but it wasn't properly before them in, 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 you know, in technical terms. The, 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 the group, the people that appealed to the Supreme Court did not have standing before the court. They weren't the right people, basically, to, to bring this appeal to the court. So the court in the California case on what was called Proposition 8 was able to sidestep the broad question of uh, whether um, gay marriage uh, bans uh, in states are constitutional or not. The, the Oklahoma law, uh, state question that became law in, in 2004 that bans uh, performance of uh, gay marriages or, or the recognition of it is actually already being challenged. Uh, it's in uh, federal court in Tulsa. And Chris, we'll get you out of here on this question. David Savage sent this question in via Twitter. He says, quote, on what legal grounds will Oklahoma have to deny federal benefits to same-sex couples who wed legally in gay marriage legal states? You know, Oklahoma doesn't grant federal benefits, but this is a good question about what's going to happen um, in terms of federal benefits for couples who were married in a state where gay marriage is, is legal, but live in a state where it's not. And this, this one is going to take some sorting out. I think it's going to be you know, may, maybe more court cases to determine exactly how this is going to be treated because there are just so many various provisions in federal law that, that apply to spouses. You know, everything from Social Security and veterans benefits to, of course, the tax um, status of people. That's, you know, where this case originated from, a woman who had to pay the estate tax um, uh, that she, on money she had inherited from uh, her spouse who died. But, uh, I mean, clearly you could have a, a situation where you know, a couple in Oklahoma that was married in another state could file a federal tax return, a joint federal tax return, and then obviously not be able to file a joint state tax return. So, that, you know, there may be some things here that the administration can address, you know, um, through federal law, through, you know, federal rulemaking. You know, that, I, th I just think that remains to be seen. I mean, Justice uh, Antonin Scalia, who, who wrote a, a pretty scathing dissent in this DOMA case, raised this very question and said, you know, what happens to a couple that was married in Albany and then moves to Alabama? What, how does this opinion um, affect them? And, and there just seems to be a lot of uncertainty surrounding that right now. Chris Castile, thanks for your time and knowledge today. We appreciate that. Ongoing coverage can be found online at newsok.com, and you can participate in the conversation. Scroll down to the bottom. You have to be a Facebook user, 
And you uh, log into that and join the conversation, submit your comments if you want to, or just simply read. Of course, more coverage can be found in tomorrow's editions of The Oklahoman.